Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kristen with Monarch Plans. And in this video, I am going to go over all the ideas that I could think of and gather for the note pages in the Erin Condren Life Planner. I usually find that the most stressful part of moving into a new planner is deciding what I'm going to do with all of the note pages in my new planner. And I spend every year digging through Instagram, digging through Pinterest, digging through all the social media, trying to figure out what is going to work for me. And so I wanted to put together a video and really compile everything that I could think of or that I could find into one place. Um, I know that this is not an exhaustive list at all, so keep that in mind. You can always um, share your ideas in the comments or I'm sure there's other ideas floating around out there, but I tried to come up with as many things as possible for the different note pages in the planner. So if you're not familiar with the Erin Condren Life Planner, there are a few different uh, spreads that are pretty customizable in the planner. So the first one is this year and a half at a glance. This is a 12 month life planner, but it still has 18 months worth of at a glance. Um, so what I have done in this planner is for each note page that I'm going to be discussing, I have written down my ideas on a sticky note and stuck them on the side of the page. So that means that you can pause this video at any point and you can take a look at the list if you need to. If you want to write your own list or copy these ideas, that's perfectly fine as well. But I wanted them to be in view so you could copy them down or at least browse them while I'm talking. The other thing is that I will be talking about the different note pages going from the front of the planner to the back of the planner and I'm going to try to mark the timestamps of when I move to the different note sections in the description box below. So if there's a certain part of the planner that you're looking for ideas for, you can check out the description and see if you can skip to the exact spot that you're looking for. So let's just get started with the uh, year and a half at a glance. So this is a really customizable spread. So as you can see, I know a lot of people use this for their school schedules or their work schedules, marking days off, days with no school, days with vacation, um, all of that, conferences, meetings, that sort of thing. Um, the next would be paydays and bills. So if you're really trying to focus on finances, this is a great place to mark paydays. You can see maybe which months might have three paydays, which months have two. You know, it kind of helps with planning when you can see everything at a higher level. Same with bills. You can do monthly bills if you want, but I know a lot of people do the bills that aren't necessarily monthly. They might be on a semi-annual basis or a quarterly basis, so it really helps to see those again on an annual spread. You can track holidays and birthdays on here and then some other um, ideas that I haven't seen too often but are definitely potential are using this as a mood tracker so you can decide on certain colors for certain moods or certain you know situations if you're anxious or stressed or sad or happy or anything like that um, and then color in every single day and at this point it would almost be just like a full year of that information just in one spot. The other could be a habit tracker. So if you have one annual habit that you're trying to build or even something you're trying to break. So if you're trying to stop doing something, you can mark on here any days that you are successful in either doing your habit or avoiding something. Um, this is also a great place to track any like medical stuff or symptoms. So for example, if you have like migraines or anything like that, it would be helpful to mark it on here so you can see certain trends. And then you can also use the following page, which we'll talk about a little bit more to maybe write down more about those migraines or illnesses or anything like that that you're having. The next would be a period tracker. Um, that's pretty easy. You can just mark off a certain week um, or like a beginning and an ending date. And then the next one is 30 day challenges. So for 30 day challenges, you could use this to write maybe like a certain challenge you're wanting to do for the month and then mark off every day that you've successfully completed it, um, that sort of thing. It really depends on the challenge if that would work for that specific challenge, but this that is an option. And for this spread specifically, 
I think one thing that I've seen that is really helpful for people in terms of marking off days is people use these types of stickers and these ones are from Erin Condren. They're, um, they're clear, they're just colored. They come with different colors. So there's like a pink and purple version. There's this green and blue version. And then there is a metallic clear version. I don't know if you can see kind of the metallic on there. Um, but people use these to mark days. So you just take one of those stickers, place it over the day. You can still see the date through the sticker, but it colors the date. So it's really easy to see. And if you do decide to do that, the best thing to do is to create a key so you remember exactly what each of the colors means. So what I did is I created this key that I've been using. I took a compliment card from my planner last year and I just added a coil clip connector. I added the dots and then I wrote what each of them is for. And so it's really easy. You can just clip it in. It just sits right there, turns with the pages really easily and you're good to go. The other option I've seen with that is you can put a key at the bottom, you can put a key at the top, wherever there's space. The other option that I've seen, and this is something I've done previously, is I have marked off or put a sheet of paper over the second half because I didn't need July through December of the following year because I generally plan July through June. You can't see June, it's back here um, behind the sticky note. So I covered up this six month section with sticker paper. So it was just a blank space and I was able to put a key there. Um, you can also write in notes. You can write in the dates of special events if you need to, um, you know, all sorts of things. So if you don't have any sticker paper, the other option is you can just use white printer paper and use double-sided tape or anything like that. That also works as well. So those are just a few of the ideas. I know there are a lot more out there. So if you do have any other ideas, please feel free to leave a comment below so everyone else can kind of see, um, you know, what all the ideas there are floating out there. So um, I forgot to mention really quickly, the other option for this is you don't need those stickers per se. Um, I know that a lot of people will use like mild liner highlighters, which are really nice highlighters because they're kind of a light color and they're not necessarily neon. They do have some neon colors, but most of them are kind of muted colors that are really easy on the eyes and they have a lot of different colors. So a lot of people will highlight a week or highlight a day. Um, you can also use like a stencil and a pen if you want to just circle a day. You can also use colored pencils. Really, there's a ton of options there. And if you were interested in those stickers, they are from Erin Condren, but I know a lot of sticker shops on Etsy also sell very similar stickers. So you can take a look on there as well. So the next spread that we'll take a look at is the 12 boxes. And so the 12 boxes, generally people tend to connect these to the months of the year, um, but they can definitely be used not related to any of the months. And we'll get to that in a minute. But here are some of the goals that I thought up a, a thought of for these boxes. So the first is just pretty simple monthly goals, um, savings tracker or a debt pay down tracker. So there's a lot of lines in here. You can decide exactly what you would want to track, um, you know, what line items would make sense for you. But these are great places to see at a glance, maybe your progress throughout the year. Um, you can also use it as a social media tracker if you're trying to track like new followers, new subscribers, anything like that. This is a great place to track like the starting and ending and see how the change has happened over the month. Um, any annual reminders. So this is pretty broad, but this is a great place. If you are wanting to label these with the months, you can put any big birthdays, any big events, if you have any big vacations any big bills that are due, um, anything like that. So it's essentially just an empty box for reminders, which I think is really nice because sometimes you could fill those out into in the later months of the year, but it's kind of nice to have everything right here in one spot to see everything at once. The next one is planner sales because I know we all like to get prepared for any big sales that are coming up. Um, you know, generally at the end of the year, there's like Black Friday sales and I know Erin Condren does um, her eight days of deals in December 
and she'll have like warehouse sales in the spring and the fall. So really this is a great place to track those as well as maybe any collaborations on Etsy or you know any sticker shop collaborations or anything like that that happen throughout the year. So um, again, just a great way to organize that information by month. The next, similar to the last page, 30 day challenges. So you can always write the challenges down here and exactly what they entail. And then from there you can track you know, how successful you are, if you're able to do it, um, any challenges you faced, anything like that. The next is a to read list or possibly books that you've read, book reviews, anything like that, um, anything to do with reading. So uh, maybe you're in a book club and you have a book that you read every month. This would be a great place. You can always like print out a little picture and put it there and you know, leave a little review, anything like that. I think that would be really cool to kind of, you know, use this as a way to track like a book club or like a book a month or anything. Maybe it's just your favorite book. Um, next is a sticker kit planner. And I actually did this. Um, this isn't necessarily something where you need all of the boxes. I actually divided each in half. So I had 12 boxes. Um, on just one side and then I used it to plan out what sticker kits I was going to use. Um, one thing if you're like me, I would suggest if you are doing that, I would use a pencil or an erasable pen or something because I change my mind constantly when I'm planning out my sticker kits because I'll usually go get a new haul and then all of a sudden I want to use one kit instead of a different one and it just gets messy. So that's a great use of this, or you could use all 12 boxes if you wanted to, that's always a possibility. You can use this for quotes. Um, you can use this for monthly memories. So maybe it's your favorite memory. You could paste a picture, like I mentioned, um, just write your favorite memories from the month. Measurements um, is another good one. I use this page in my wellness journal or my wellness planner as a place to log my measurements. Um, and sometimes my weight, but I usually do that on a monthly basis, like within the actual planner itself. Um, so it's a really great place, place to see your progress, you know, from one month to the end of the year. Um, the next is cleaning lists or like a chore list. So I have a couple different ideas for that. The cleaning list could be instead of, you know, listing months in the header, you can list different rooms of your house. Um, so you might have 12 rooms, you might only take six, that's totally up to you in your situation, but you could then list all the items that need to be cleaned or all the tasks that need to get done in each room. And then if you have this other page open, then you could potentially use it for maybe it's tasks that need to get done annually, every six months, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily. So that's a good idea. Um, you know, it's really up to you, but I think this is a really great place to put that. So it's in one spot again, so you can just reference it whenever you need to. So with this page, what I've found helpful is, um, the monthly sticker books from Erin Condren because they come with the little monthly stickers and some decoration if you feel like decorating, but it's really helpful because every month has... The monthly sticker that you can stick in the header. I know a lot of Etsy shops also sell those so keep an eye out if you're looking for different types of monthly stickers. Um, I know that there are a bunch of those out there. There are also shops that sell kits that will actually cover up these boxes so take a look if you are looking for just something not quite sure. I would definitely explore Etsy, um, search for like Erin Condra note pages, and you'll probably find some that will fit in these pages. So the next um, notes page that I'm going to talk about, and it isn't necessarily one that gets set up at the beginning of your planner every year because this page occurs every single month, but I did want to touch on the dashboard page because I do see a lot of questions floating around about what people use this for, um, and a lot of people are looking for suggestions. This year is very, very nice because Erin Condren removed the headings that were pre-printed on the page last year. So last year there was one that said birthdays and there was one that said monthly goals. So it really just pigeonholed you into using this for one thing when really it's a blank box that could be used for anything. 
So a few ideas for the dashboard page and what I will kind of touch on first is how I tend to use this and I'll include a few pictures um, on the screen as well of my dashboard pages each month. Keep in mind those are in the old life planner, the kaleidoscope life planner, so it won't look necessarily the same as this one. But what I usually do is I would use this for monthly goals. I will probably still use it for monthly goals. I just think it's a perfect place for that. Um, in this section, I used it as kind of like a brain dump or just kind of like a big spot for reminders and to-do lists. Really didn't have any specific meaning, but I always would fill it up with just different things I needed to do or remind myself of. This box was always used for something wellness related. I almost always would use it as a weekly weigh-in tracker. There's the perfect number of lines for it to be used every week um, for my weigh-ins and everything so I could see trends and then I could usually tally up the total amount of weight I lost at the end or gained. But um, I've also used this for measurements, a lot of different things. And then this bottom section I've always used as a habit tracker. So I'll usually just create like 30 squares and I can usually fit three habits in here. I think I've been able to fit four before, but it really just depends on how you lay it out. So those are a few ideas. That's usually what I do. But over here, you can see I have some other ideas for you. So the next one is using this. If you want to use the spread more for budget, um, or finances, you can keep track of your bill due dates. You can keep track of maybe any deposits into savings or any spending from savings. You can do financial goals if you need to, or any reminders in terms of, you know, what do you want your debt snowball to look like, anything like that. Um, and this can be really anything. It could be habits. So if you want to do no spend, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, but this is a good place to have like a finance dashboard, especially if you're planning to use this as like a budget page in your in your planner. Um, the next is tracking birthdays and events. So really any of these boxes would be great for that. Reminders, like I mentioned, uh, memories. That's another awesome way to use this is you can put a picture in here, um, generally the HP Sprocket small printers will print a picture that is the perfect size for this. You could also put a few smaller pictures here if you want to and just write down your favorite memories. Um, that's great and especially if you pair it with this page as well then it would be a great memory keeping spread. You can use it to keep track of any cleaning or chores you want to do, quotes, um, a list of happy mail that you are wanting to send or a happy mail that you've received and then maybe you want to send like thank you cards or anything like that. Um, you can keep track of your online orders and whether they've been shipped or received or anything like that. Social media stats is another great one if that's something you're keeping track of. Um, I mentioned wellness, so I said weigh-ins, that sort of thing and measurements. It doesn't have to be that, um, but those are a few options. And I mentioned to-do list. The last one is tending list. So if you're not familiar, there is a goal planner out there that's called the Power Sheets. And it breaks your goals down into monthly, weekly, and daily tasks or habits that you want to accomplish. So this is a great place to put that. You can maybe put your tending list here and put more specific goals over here. You can fit your tending list in here. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, but I think it's a great place to focus on goal setting since it's always with you in your planner, you know, that's a good option. So the next section that we will discuss are the blank note pages in the back of the planner. There are a lot of blank note pages. So there's one spread, four, five, so at least five spreads, which is like 11 you know, 11 blank pages. So the notes pages are so flexible. You can see I have a huge list and I actually ran out of room. I have way more um, ideas that I've just found. Essentially searching bullet journal on Pinterest, you can find amazing ideas for these pages. They are lined. It would be possibly a little bit easier for some of these if these were dot grid, but you can still accomplish anything even with lined pages. So I'm just going to mostly like list these out. I don't want to make this like a 45 minute video by having to talk through each of these. So 
Um, I'll just kind of briefly mention these um, just in case you're just listening and don't want to look at the screen. So you can use these for reading or movie trackers for lists that you either want to read or movies or books that you've read or watched um, or like Netflix shows. Annual goals, so it might be similar to the 12 boxes if you wanted to break them down into monthly goals, um, but just on the notes pages themselves. A weight loss tracker. I've seen people either draw in their own like little squares and then either that's like the number of pounds they've lost or potentially like different goals. So your full first goal is two pounds down, your second goal is three pounds down, you know, that sort of thing. And then you can list your rewards, anything like that. Needs and wants list. Um, I actually did this for my fiance and I. I just divided the paper into quadrants and I put um, Andrew and Kristen and then needs and wants. And so anytime we thought of something that we needed, I would write it in either of our sections depending on who needed it. Anytime I thought of something we wanted, I would write down whatever it is in the want section. So it was a pretty nice way to keep track and be able to actually think about whether we actually need something or whether we just want it. Um, I found it really helpful in terms of budgeting to be able to write that out and really contemplate that before actually making a purchase. The next is a Christmas list. So you can write down all the people you want to buy gifts for and keep track of the gifts you're wanting to buy for them um, or gifts you have already bought date ideas for yourself and your significant other or similarly family outings or family dates so if you you know have places you want to take your kids or anything like that um, seasonal bucket lists are great so you can come up with just a bunch of things you want to do in your area throughout each season a list of favorite meals and maybe that includes not just the meal but maybe a list of the main ingredients that you need to make sure you have um, book reviews, a debt payoff tracker or a savings tracker. I know there are a lot of places online that actually sell printables of these and what I sometimes will do is I will print them and you can print them at a smaller size so maybe like 80% or so and it'll be the right size to fit into the planner. So that's an option is if you don't want to draw anything in you can always print something out and tape it or paste it into your planner and then it's just there. You don't really have to do a whole lot of work. Um, you can find a lot of the printable um, items on Pinterest if you search or you know, you can just search the internet a little bit. Um, there's a lot of financial ones and I know you can also find like weight loss trackers, anything like that. The next is a shipment tracker. Um, you know, you can create just a long page that you fill out every time you order something a list of house projects um, that you want to get done and that can include um, like bigger deep cleaning projects as well. You can use this as a vision board so if you have a certain project you want to get done or if you just need some motivation and you're working towards a big goal it's an awesome place to put in just motivational quotes and pictures and things that are going to remind you of where you want to be. Um, the next I have cleaning routine, very similar to what I explained before, is just either breaking it out by room or breaking it out by frequency. And then you can see exactly what needs to get done, where and when. A mood tracker. So I've seen people um, do pretty much an entire year on a page and you can mark in like a certain color and create a key depending on your mood. And then you'll be able to see at a glance the entire year. So it just require you to um, draw enough boxes in here to be able to have 365 boxes and then you'd just be able to fill them out um, every single day and um, I think it's usually called like a year in pixels is essentially what it is so I wrote that down here so similarly you can do an exercise tracker so any day that you exercise you can color in a box um, but I just put this year in pixels because you can really do it with anything it'd be I drank enough water today, so I'm going to color my box blue. And by the end of the year, you can see how many boxes were blue in the entire year. Um, you can use this for countdowns, and this is a little bit confusing, so I'll explain this. So 
I'll put an example on the screen as well. But before the new year, I think in around like October, I created a spread in my planner called 20 by 20. And it was 20 things I wanted to accomplish before the new year 2020. And so it was essentially just a countdown, but I had things I wanted to accomplish. Similarly, I created a spread that was 19 for COVID-19. So during the COVID-19 stay at home order, quarantine, all of that, I created 19 things, a list of 19 things that I wanted to accomplish or I wanted to do by the time things were back to normal. So those are a couple ideas. I've seen people do like 30 by 30. So 30 things you wanna do by the time you're 30, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different ways and variations of that, but that's generally what I mean by countdowns. But you can also do it as an actual countdown. So if you have some big date in the future that you're looking forward to, you can have a really cool spread that's maybe themed. So like if it's a vacation or something like that, have it be like really cool vacation theme. Um, and have like an actual countdown where you're crossing off boxes. The next is a level 10 life spread. Um, if you don't know what level 10 life is, I would Google that and check. I don't really want to get into it, but it's essentially a way to look at where your life is at right now and use it to kind of do some goal setting and evaluating. So that's definitely an option. Um, it's something that you can draw in and I'm almost guaranteeing that there's printables out there to at least help you lay it out. Um, so that would be a great one as well. Password tracker, since I know I forget my passwords all the time. Um, if you want to or feel comfortable writing them down physically, you can write them in your notes pages. Um, home maintenance schedule, so maybe when was the last time you did certain tasks, when did you change your filters, you know, all that stuff. Um, measurements, so, you know, like on your body measurements, if you're working on your wellness, you can do a sample packing list. So if your family takes, um, you know, like short outings on the weekends or anything like that, or maybe you take a couple long vacations every year, it'd be a great place to write down what you usually take. So then there, it takes out a lot of the guesswork when you're trying to pack your bags, maybe for the next trip. And then the last are 30 day challenges. And I know I've listed this pretty much on every spread so far, but really these are really flexible ways to incorporate challenges that may help you work towards your goals, all that sort of thing. So as I mentioned, these are definitely, this is not an exhaustive list at all. There are so many more that you could do. Um, and again, I would just search for bullet journal on Pinterest and you'll be able to find a ton. The next one I will talk about is the contacts page. So the contacts page, generally I think a lot of people just think of it as the contacts page, but it actually has some other uses. You can use this to keep track of any gift ideas. So you can just write the person's name, write a couple gift ideas. It's great for people who might not be your immediate family or might not be in your family. Maybe it's coworkers, maybe it's just kind of friends that won't require multiple gifts. So I wouldn't necessarily use this for like my kids because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get two more than two gifts for, for children. Um, you can use it for important phone numbers. So it doesn't necessarily have to be friends. You can put doctors, all the different types of doctors, um, school numbers, anything like that. So it's not just limited to, you know, like friends and family. It can be a password tracker. You can put the name of the site or the name of whatever it is and then your username and password. Monthly memories. So you can divide these into months and there are 18 of these. So if you have an 18 month planner, this is a great idea. If you have a 12 month planner, you can always maybe put pictures down here or something like that. But you can write down the name of the month and then just like two of your top memories from the month really helps you narrow down like the, the things that brought you the greatest joy during that month. Um, teacher info, so I know that, you know, when kids start getting into middle school and high school, they have multiple teachers that you might have to keep in touch with. So this is a great place to have their names written down, um, maybe their email address and their phone number, whatever information is useful. 
And then finally, this is something that is very random, but I actually think would work pretty well. And I might actually use this um, this year is vacation plans. And so what you can do is if you have your vacation planned, you can write down the name of like the flight and the confirmation number and like the time and dates. You can write down hotel information, anything like that where there might be, you know, specific places or, you know, transportation things that you need to keep track of. So I think that, that would be helpful because I'm planning on going on my honeymoon sometime this year. Um, and we are planning to stop multiple places. So we'll have multiple hotels. We'll have multiple flights. Um, it's a really great place to keep track of that information all in one spot. The next one I'll touch on, I don't have a sticky note for this, but I just wanted you to see the 20, uh, 2022 year at a glance. Generally, I would use this in the same way as maybe the, um, the year at a glance at the beginning of the planner but 2022 is pretty far out and I know that 2022 will be included in my new planner so what I tend to do is just keep this simple use highlighters use pens and just write down the different events that are happening in each month so then I can look at this and then transfer it over to my new planner next year I really don't do anything fancy here so if you do have any ideas of something that might be helpful for other people to hear please leave a comment below and then the last thing I wanted to touch on really quick was the perpetual calendar. And this comes in the back of the life planner. Um, it comes in every life planner. So I'm sure some people have a bunch of them. But what this is, is it just goes month by month and just has a list of 1 through 31 for the number of days in the month, 1 through 28 or 29. Um, and so you can use this to write in any reoccurring things that happen on the same day every single year. So that could be birthdays, you know, it could be anything like that. Um, that's a great way to use it, but I've seen people use this as essentially a one sentence a day journal. And I think that that's a great idea because it makes you summarize your day into one sentence and then you have it all in one spot for you to take a look at at the end of the year. And the best part about this is it fits in your planner really well. It just sits in the back of the planner, so it's always there with your planner. And it's really tiny and easy to store. So you could keep a ton of these and it wouldn't take up that much room. And then you would have entire years worth of memories in you know a tiny spot. So I think that's a really, really good idea to use um, a use for this and then finally um, you can use this I mentioned it a few times in for other pages but you can use it as a mood tracker um, so if you just want to write you know a word stressed nervous anxious you can say migraine tired anything like that so I think this is a really great um, place to keep track of those types of things as well so essentially you can just use it as a calendar or a journal. It doesn't have to be something that you write just birthdays in or something like that. And this also has um, in the back some important contacts, has username, password, website, everything like that, as well as holidays and dates that are re reoccurring every year. So I think this is a great little addition that a lot of people overlook. They might just set it aside and then they completely forget about it, but it's really, really cool to have something that's that portable and that small in the back of your planner that really could be used for something really great. So that is it for my ideas. I'm hoping that you got at least a couple ideas out of this, um, of this video. And if not, like I mentioned, just search Pinterest, search Instagram, look through all the hashtags. Um, I think hashtag EC move in is a great hashtag to search. Um, and then when you do do your spreads and moving into your new planner, use that hashtag and then people can check out what you did. Um, there's just some really, really good ideas out there from people in the planner community. So if you do have any questions or if you have any suggestions or ideas for other people to use, please leave a comment below. Um, I'll also leave a um, thing that says my Instagram handle there at 
monarch underscore plan so you can take a look at my Instagram. I do have some pictures of my notes pages up there. Um, but again, thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. Um, and I hope you found this helpful. I will talk to you later. Bye.